Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back in today with another fantasy football video. In today's video, I'm going over the Thursday night football matchup and whether you should start or sit guys in this game. There are obviously updates due to the injury report, so I'm going to be talking about those in this video. Colts at Texans coming up in just a few hours. Now, before I get in the video, I'd like to give you guys a word from my sponsor, OverlayDFS.com. OverlayDFS.com is my favorite way to play daily fantasy football. Now, my favorite game on this website is the progressive game, where every single week, if the bonus does not get hit, the money keeps on rolling and rolling and rolling on until you eventually, and someone hits that beautiful 12-0 to get that progressive bonus. As you can see here in the $22 game, which is the best game to play this week, if you go 12-0 and and all those stars align, you can get over 8 grand winning in that game. Now, if you don't end up going that beautiful 12-0, don't you worry, because if you're in the top 10%, you get nine times your buy-in at all levels. $2.5, you get $18. $22 entry, you get $180. And if you enter the $109 game and you hit that beautiful top 10%, you get nine times your money at $900. Now, there's also another game with best record wins. You enter $11, the top 10% get $90, and that top prize, you get $100. So it's going to look beautiful on there right now. But obviously, that price is going to keep going up as more people join and enter. Pretty much, you're not even playing against anyone. You're pretty much just playing against yourself. You're playing against the board, and you got to make sure that you get just a good enough record to hit that money. Now, I'm going to explain how it necessarily works right here this week. Now I'm going to join the $22 game. Pretty much how it works. All you got to do is pick 12 of these players out of a huge selection of players and plus three alternates. So you got to hit that beautiful 12-0 record to get that huge bonus. Or obviously you can get nine and three or seven and five. It's different every single week. That would make you hit that beautiful and get that nine times your money. So one of the games here and one of the strategies I like to do is I like to go with Drew Brees over Russell Wilson here. And then I scroll down to the wide receivers and I select Michael Thomas because I'm going to be stacking my quarterback with my wide receiver. That is my favorite thing to do on this website. So make sure you guys check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. Goodbye, my friends. Make sure to check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. Let's get right into the video, though. Colts at Texans, start or sit. The first position we got here is the quarterback position. Now I'm going to be starting Deshaun Watson in this game. I really like Deshaun Watson's matchup up against the Indianapolis Colts. It seems like that this game may end up being somewhat high scoring. The Colts have won the last three of these outings against Deshaun Watson's Colt or Deshaun Watson's Texans, I should say. So I think that this may be a close matchup, a lot closer than a lot of people would predict. Realistically, you'd think that the Houston Texans might shit rock the Indianapolis Colts, but it seems like that may not be what happens come tonight. Now, Deshaun Watson obviously took a shit in your lineup last week. He played god awful, but this week he is getting a much better matchup. The Ravens defense was roaring against Deshaun Watson, and this week the Indianapolis Colts defense does not look as good. I like Deshaun Watson in this game to get done with his legs and through the air. Now I'm going to be sitting Jacoby B in this game. I don't see him being a really top 12 or top 14 option in this game against the Baltimore Ravens. I think that both teams are going to be scoring points, but it seems like when Jacoby Brissett and they're playing well, well, they just like to run and run and run and run again. Now, obviously, the last time they played, Jacoby Brissett threw four touchdowns and Deshaun Watson only threw one. So you can obviously see that there is potential for Jacoby Brissett to play great, but I just don't see him playing well enough to warrant being a top 12 or top 14 guy. But obviously, in a lot of situations, Jacoby B is going to be the guy you're going to be looking for, and you could do a lot worse than Jacoby Brissett, but to me, he is not a must start. Now, onto the running back position. I'm going to be starting up Carlos Hyde in this game. Now, I understand, guys, Carlos Hyde is really just a guy that's going to score you if you're in a PPR league 8, 9, or 10 points every single game. And he's just the king of consistency. He's never going to score you 20 points. And sometimes he scores you 3 points. But most of the time, he scores you 10 points. And if you're going to go ahead and like that and lock that in your lineup, especially with a lot of bye weeks this week, go ahead and do it. There's obviously a lot worse options out there than Carr. Los Hyde. Next game here, or not next game, I should say the next player here is Jonathan Williams. He has been announced by the Indianapolis Colts to be the head honcho back on this team. We saw him rush for over 100 yards in the last game they played. In that same game, Marlon Mack rushed for 100 yards before he got hurt. Now, this game they're playing up against the Houston Texans, so it may be a bit of a better run defense, but even with that said, I still think Jonathan Williams will be able to get it done, but this may be one of those trap games, so you have to feel a bit 
or not trap game, I should say, but more of a trap thing where you see him do so well, and then the next week he shits the bed, especially since there's going to be a huge committee in this game because Jordan Wilkins is also going to be active in this game. Naheem Hines is also a start for me, but he's got the and next to him because I'm not too sure it's going to go his way. Obviously, Naheem Hines is the pass catching back on the Indianapolis Colts. So if the ball, if they're throwing the ball, then Naheem Hines is going to be able to eat. But if they are really committed to the run, Naheem Hines may not have as good of a game. If the Indianapolis Colts get up early and get up fast, the run game may get going and Naheem Hines may be left for dead. Now for the sits at the running back position. I like Duke Johnson as a player, but on the Houston Texans, he has been so up and down every single game. Some games he scores three points. Then you see the next game, he scores 25. And then he goes back to scoring four. And then he scores 15. And then he scores five. And then he scores 10. It's very fucking confusing for Duke Johnson. Do you roll the dice with Duke Johnson if you have a lot of cojones? If you believe that in this game it is going to be very high scoring and they're going to keep going back and forth, then go ahead and fire up Duke Johnson. But I can definitely see a game where Carlos Hyde gets a lot of work and Duke Johnson is also left for dead. Now, Marlon Mack, obviously, you're going to be sitting him because he's dead. He is not going to be playing in this game. He's likely out for a decent amount of time. And Jordan Wilkins is also a sit since Jonathan Williams is the head honcho on the team. I don't think he gets enough snaps to warrant a start in this game. Now to the wide receiver position. I'm going to be starting up T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton is likely going to be active in this game as I'm recording it. It's not a 100% thing, but everything that I'm reading, it seems like they don't care if T.Y. Hilton hasn't practiced in the past three weeks or four weeks however long he's been hurt. They don't give a fuck. They're going to let T.Y. Hilton play. And when T.Y. Hilton is playing, you're going to be found it hard-pressed to sit him down. T.Y. Hilton normally lets his nuts hang against the Houston Texans, and he always plays quite well. So this is obviously an ideal matchup for Mr. T.Y. Hilton, so I like him in this game against the Houston Texans. Now, DeAndre Hopkins obviously is a locked and loaded start in your lineup every single week, so you should not really question that. You play your studs, and DeAndre Hopkins is obviously one of your studs. Now, Will Fuller active in this game. I would be firing him up as well. Deshaun Watson definitely misses having Will Fuller on his team, but Will Fuller is also a dice roll. He has those games where he scores two touchdowns or one touchdown and is the deep down the field threat that Deshaun Watson loves. And then there's other games where Deshaun Watson just feeds someone else and maybe Darren Fells and maybe DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller just has a bad game. But right now, I definitely would start him and I think that he's a solid wide receiver too in this game. Now I'm going to be sitting down Zach Pascal in this game. Now that T.Y. Hilton is back and looking to be active, there's no shot I will play Zach Pascal, especially after he's played so shit the last couple of games. Maybe he will prove that he is a better just wide receiver two on the team with Jacoby Brissett. But the beginning of the season does not really tell that tale. Now onto the tight end position. Before I get into the tight ends, make sure you guys do click that subscribe button down below if you have enjoyed thus far. Now I'm going to be starting up Eric Ebron in this game. I like Eric Ebron as well as Jack Doyle for the Indianapolis Colts. Last week, obviously, Jack Doyle put up that goose egg, that fat 0.0000 repeating in your lineup, and you were probably very pissed off, and you're going to be quick to write him off. But what I know is that Jacoby B loves throwing the ball to that tight end in the red zone, and it may be Eric Ebron, it may be Jack Doyle. Obviously, there's some risk in that, but I like Eric Ebron and Jack Doyle in this game to potentially be top 12 guys. I like Darren Fells as well, but he's nowhere near top uh, 10. He's probably more of a top 14, top 15 type of a guy. It seems like the love for Darren Fells was not there the last game that the Houston Texans played. It was there the previous two games. We were scoring three touchdowns in two games. But with that said, I think that Darren Fells still could get it done this week against the Indianapolis Colts. Now onto the defense position. I'm going to be sitting down both defenses in this matchup, the Texans and the Colts. Obviously, both these defenses aren't even the best to be starting in fantasy anyways. They're much more of streaming options when they have a very ideal matchup, and neither of these matchups are ideal enough for both teams to warrant a start in fantasy football. So thank you guys all for watching this video. If at any point you ended up enjoying, you ended up chuckling, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. I will not be live streaming today. I'm going out to a graduation for one of my close friends. So I will not be able to live stream. There will obviously be a live stream on Sunday. I love each and every single one of you guys. Make sure you guys have a blessed rest of your Thursday. And let's go Texans. Fuck the Colts. <laughs> I really don't care who wins. But, you know, we're going to hitch our wagon to the Texans to turn it around after the Colts have been 3-0 and in every in every matchup they've had against Mr. Deshaun Watson. Goodbye.